Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the 2024 presidential election in light of some recent news that came out yesterday afternoon. Mike Pence has officially suspended his campaign for president. He's out of the race. And yet again, the GOP field narrows in what, as this article, New York Times is indicating, has been a race that is dominated, dominated by former President Trump. So let's just take a moment to talk and, you know, briefly reflect on Mike Pence's campaign. It didn't last very long. He announced in the late spring and he's dropping out now in early fall, October. So, um, again, he didn't even get close to Iowa. He only participated in two debates and, you know, he didn't really stand out. I thought he did an okay job on the first debate. If you look back at what I wrote about that debate on Substack, I said he did uh, enough. I thought he was pretty uh, smart, and I, I thought the way he conducted himself was decent. Second debate, I think, really just didn't do him any favors, though, and he really struggled to appeal to anyone. I said that his biggest weakness was that when he talked, he just didn't really seem entertaining. And, you know, you could say, look, you don't want presidents to be entertaining. You want them to be smart, uh, honest, cautious— uh, capable, determined, talented. But the problem is Mike Pence doesn't fit the bill of the person or of the people who do well in politics nowadays. Politics is all but entertainment. It's all about who can get the most clicks, the most cheers, the most interactions. And he was running in a race with the front runner Donald Trump on his side of the um, primary, the Republican primary. The front runner Donald Trump was always always going to win the attention race. Donald Trump is one of the most entertaining politicians, he's probably the most entertaining politician in American history. Whether you like him, you hate him, he is among the most interesting politicians ever. I would probably say number one of all time in America. He is very, very good at capturing a room. He did it back in 2015 when he first ran for the Republican primary for president. And he's been doing it really well ever since, even though he's out of the spotlight um, because he's no longer the president. He's still manages to get his name in the news almost every day. He still manages, to, you know, he, he wasn't even on the debate stage for the previous two uh, debates, but he finds ways to be the most talked about candidate uh, in this primary by far. And that's why he's winning by so much. So Mike Pence, not a very entertaining speaker, not a very gifted debater in my opinion. Look, um, he did a pretty good job in both of his VP debates in 2016, 2020. I think you'd make that argument. But he doesn't have the entertainment value that other people like Donald Trump has, as I mentioned. Um, but more broadly, right, like you can blame Pence for not being interesting or not being a, a super captivating speaker, but he was never going to win. He could have had the best debate performance of all time twice in a row. You know, he could have had the best performance ever in the August debate then topped it a month later. And I don't think he would have moved very much. Look, he is a conservative Republican, but he's not a firebrand in the way that Donald Trump is. And he's not Trump. He, he's not even that brand of republicanism, really. And in today's GOP, that's not going to win you a primary, especially at the national level where you have a half incumbent like Donald Trump. So Mike Pence, he was always dead on arrival. He was never going to be competitive. He was never going to make a play for it. Maybe he could get a couple of votes here and there. Maybe in Iowa, he'd do okay. Maybe in New Hampshire, he'd win some more people over. But was he ever going to beat Trump or even come close to it? No. So I think this is a smart move for him, obviously, because he had no path in this primary, there's really no reason for him to stay in it. And as a result of that, I think him dropping out sooner rather than later saves him money, saves him time. You know, it's less deflating to drop out of a campaign early than go all the way, you know, really, really entrench yourself in it and then have no choice but in March just to fold. And so, obviously, I don't know what his plan was here. I've always said from, you know, in January 2023, a lot of people really thought it was, you know, an open primary. DeSantis was going to win. Trump was in a lot of trouble. Maybe someone like Mike Pence could come in and uh, have a lane to victory. And I was always saying, look, Donald Trump, he's going to win. He is approved of or he is the top choice for the vast majority of Republicans. They, he's been their nominee the past two election cycles, and he's popular within the party. I know there's some people who don't like him who are Republicans. They make up the very, very small minority of voters in this electorate. So as a result of that, people like Mike Pence who are saying, look, I'm conservative, I'm a Republican, I'm going to govern just how uh, you know any other Republican would, they're not going to be Trump, and they're not going to come close either. So Mike Pence, he's the first of many Republican candidates to drop out. You know, Like I said, there's more to come. 
Uh, we, we've already seen Perry Johnson, Francis Suarez uh, take that route. And I think we're going to see more before Iowa and, you know, as the debates get harder and harder to qualify for. For the fourth debate, it's on November 8th. I believe it's in Miami. Uh, obviously, DeSantis is qualified. Nikki Haley's qualified. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy is qualified. And Chris Christie's qualified. Beyond that, if we don't see, you know, maybe Doug Burgum qualify, maybe he drops out, you know, maybe some more candidates. So, uh, look, it's going to be a rough primary season for the Republicans. Uh, if you're not a supporter of Trump, I think it's pretty solidly in his favor. Um, if we were reading this race, it would be safe Trump, right? Like, you know, we do safe, likely lean tilt. It's safe, and I think you'd be pretty, it'd be pretty difficult to make an argument for anything other than that, even though there's still a lot of time. Uh, the dynamics are not shifting at all in favor of anyone other than Trump. And I think that Mike Pence, he's just going to, you know, he's the first, many more to come. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down below. Tell me who you think is next, and I'll see you all in the next one.